Hello and welcome to lecture 36. We are discussing about design strategies. So in last lecture, we were discussing about the fixing of initial parameters and their importance. So initially we have introduced two parameters that's what is my flow coefficient and loading coefficient. Later on we have started discussing about what will be the effect of different parameters on say stage efficiency. So we have combined the parameters called say degree of reaction, diffusion factor, loading coefficient and my flow coefficient and their impact on say stage efficiency. Now day by day as we have understood our expected total pressure ratio or say pressure rise from say oh, uh, from the engine that's what is increasing and that's what lead to increase say per stage pressure ratio. Now when we say per stage pressure rise we are expecting to be larger that says my main stage loading factor that's what will be increasing. And that's what is putting so many constraints in sense of our aerodynamics as well as in sense of my operation. Okay, because efficiency that's what is one concern, overall operating range that's what is second concern, and you know, stall limit or say surge limit that's what is coming also as one of the limit. Okay, now we have introduced one more parameter that's what is called say axial velocity density ratio. And that also people they are selecting for say initial stage of calculation. Then we were discussing about what is the effect of relative velocity. And we have realized when we are having our relative velocity at the outlet to be lower, it says it says it, it represents say effective diffusion. There are cases where we are having say exit and inlet relative velocity to be same when we say we are having our degree of reaction to be zero and there are special designs where intentionally we are looking for exit relative velocity to be large. Let us move to the next step. Now once we have done all these parameters in sense of calculation, later stage that is what will be coming is we are looking for delta beta. That delta beta is nothing but my blade turning angle. Now if you recall when we are saying my flow that is what is entering at some angle blade angle say beta 1 or say air angle beta 1. Then we started discussing about the introduction of parameter called incidence angle. Now what we have realized when we are increasing our incidence angle we are increasing our lift coefficient that is what is a characteristic of our aerofoil. When we are increasing our lift coefficient that is what is increasing our pressure rising capacity when we are saying this aerofoil it has been used for say axial flow compressor or maybe for fan. Okay. Now what happens when we are increasing this say CP distribution it says per stage pressure rise we are getting to be higher but at the same time beyond certain number there may be possibility that your flow will get separated from the blade. At the same time we were discussing about say negative incidence angle where we are having say our pressure rising capacity or my CP distribution that is what first coming to be lower. Then we have realized suppose if we consider this is what is our performance map and say end point that is what is say my design point. We can say this is what is my design mass flow rate and my design pressure ratio. Now when we are decreasing our mass flow rate my pressure that is what is going to increase and my point that will be shifted from say point N to point A. And beyond that point we will be having say stall that is what it says like stall point. Okay. Now what is happening we learn for constant say rotational speed if we are reducing our axial velocity that is what will lead to increase my incidence angle. Okay. Now this incidence angle when it is increasing we realize that is what is increasing my CL and that is the reason why we are getting high pressure rise. Remember that is what we are discussing about single aerofoil 
my blade is made up of number of aerofoils. So all together, that's what will be giving me rice pressure rise. If you consider a second point, suppose I'm moving towards say on high mass flow rate side, our incidence that's what is going to decrease and that's what will lead to reduce my CL and that's what will lead to reduce my pressure rising capacity. So we can say our pressure rise expected, that's what will be lower. So we have now variation of incidence angle in positive and negative sense. What we have introduced, we say like this need to be in particular range. Okay. Suppose say if you are considering near the tip region, we need to introduce our incidence angle that is what will be in the range of negative say 1 to 2 degree. Near the hub, we need to introduce say our incidence angle to be positive. Now realize one thing, this is what is not we are calculating, this is what we are putting in the design point. Okay. So purposefully we are introducing this incidence angle at the initial stage of design so that when it is working under off design condition, it will still behave like working in a design condition. So here if you look at, here we can say my incidence that is what is say going to reduce. So you know this incidence what we are putting near the tip, it is negative that is what will be taking care of that situation. Okay. And we have realized, do not forget when we say our incidence to be negative and when we say our incidence to be positive, that is what is based on where my stagnation point that is what is located at the leading edge. We realize when we say my flow that is what is incident on the pressure side, that is what we are defining as a positive incidence. And when we are saying our flow that is what is incident on say suction side, that is what we have defined as a negative incidence. Okay. Now let us see like how we will be using this for our, our design purpose. Okay. So you can say now as we have discussed earlier also, say now I am putting what angle we are writing, that angle we are writing as a blade metal angle or blade fabrication angle. That is what is given by, say this is what is my case. It says my beta 1 plus or minus incidence angle. That is what is at my entry. Okay. Same way at the exit, we have introduced the angle. That is what is called deviation angle. And when we are making our blade, that deviation angle, that is what we are reducing. Or say that is what is say minus. So this is what is say my outlet angle. That is what is minus this deviation angle. So remember now this desk. That is what is representing my metal angles. So at the entry, suppose say I am having negative incidence, this will be beta minus negative incidence. If it is positive, it will be positive. And my deviation angle always we are subtracting from our metal angle, from our flow angle. Okay. Now if this is what is your case, in order to calculate our deviation angle, we are using our Carter rule. Okay. So as per the Carter, we can write down this deviation angle at any radial station. That's what is given by m into theta square root of s by c. Okay. Now this camber angle, so theta that is nothing but it is a say camber angle. That camber angle we can calculate based on my delta beta minus this incidence angle divided by this. Okay. Now. If you are putting this m, this is what is called m parameter, it is given based on say a by c ratio. So a by c is nothing but that is what is representing where I will be having my bank maximum camber. So let us see what is this case. It says here, this is what is say 0.4 when we are talking about our aerofoil to be C4 aerofoil and it is 0.5 when we are using our Naka 65 aerofoil. Now the question must arise, here we are writing in sense of beta. Suppose we are doing our calculation for the stator, we need to replace this angle by alpha. Okay. So for stator also we will be having incidence angle, for stator also we will be having deviation angle. And this is what we need to calculate for both stator as well as for the rotor. It says for circular camber line, 
this 2a by c that is what we are taking as 1. Okay? And for inlet guide vanes which is we are using for say accelerating our flow this deviation angle that is what is given in sense of my camber angle and in sense of my s by c ratio. Okay? So, do not forget what all we have discussed up till now in sense of our cascade aerodynamics. So, these angles, these angles are of importance when we are making, we are fabricating our blades. Okay? So, just realize the thing, this incidence angle, purposefully we are assuming this incidence angle. It says when we are using say our subsonic airy foils, safely we can assume say negative 5 degree at the tip region and positive 5 degree at the hub region. When we are going with the transonic aerofoil where my leading edge radius that is what is smaller and it is very sensitive with the incidence angle, you can safely assume near the tip that incidence as minus 2 and near hub as positive 2. Same way this deviation angle we need to calculate based on Carter's chart. Later on based on our computational study looking to our flow behavior maybe that can be corrected. So, when we will be doing our design that time we will be discussing this aspect. But at this moment now you realize we are looking for the angles these angles are metal angle. Okay? Next because we have modified now these angles with the metal angles accordingly we need to do modification in our stagger angle also. So, here if you look at for stator that is what is given by this is what is my metal angle alpha 1 dash minus theta by 2 same way for say rotor we can write down like this. And as we have discussed this stagger angle that is what is very important because that is what is deciding my swallowing capacity of the compressor. So, basically how much flow that is what is going inside my rotor that is what is been decided or the managed by this stagger angle. Now, we have discussed about the use of different kind of camber lines. So, when we are using say circular camber line we will be deciding with the stagger angle we will decide what will be my m parameter and when we are using say parabolic camber line we will be selecting or deciding my m parameter in a different way. Okay? or vice versa also we can do with. We need to be very careful when we are increasing our stagger angle there may be chances that my flow will get separated from the suction surface. So, basically this is what is what we learn from our fundamental basically we are considering our flow passage within the blade as a diffusing passage. So, all fundamentals what we have learned at the initial stage that is what is equally applicable what we are using for say diffusing section. Okay? Now, this is what all we were discussing in sense of global train for last 50 years. So, here if you look at this is what is representing the selection of my aspect ratio and as we have discussed now people they are going greedy and they are moving towards a lower aspect ratio it has its own benefit. And that is what is improving say my operating range that is what is improving the stall margin with some compromise in the efficiency. But still people they are happy with moving towards say low aspect ratio blades that is what is having more benefit. Now solidity that is what is coming into the picture that is what will be calculated based on my cord and my number of blades. You can see over the year people they are looking for higher solidity blades. Okay? And this is what is representing what we have discussed in last lecture that is what is my average stage loading that is also going to increase. And all this strain that is what is because we are expecting our overall pressure ratio that is what is going to increase. So, you can say this is what is the rise of my overall pressure ratio. Okay? And the increase of this overall pressure ratio is not because we are looking for say a rise of overall pressure ratio it has to concern it has to relate with my fuel consumption. So, here if you look at this is what is representing the global train okay? and we are expecting our improvement in fuel economy year by year and that is what is giving 
this kind of expectations from the engine. And this kind of expectations we are looking for when we are designing our axial flow compressor. Now, the parameter that's what we have discussed earlier also, that's what is say selection of number of blades. So, let's discuss there are different strategies they are being used for the selection of number of blades. Conventionally, if you recall, we have discussed, we are having the parameter that's what is called say diffusion factor. Now, when we say diffusion factor at the deep region, maybe you can assume your diffusion factor and from that diffusion factor, maybe you can select your number of blades or you select your cord. Okay. Suppose say I am assuming my cord based on that, I will be getting number of blades and that is one of the way of doing the calculation for the selection of number of blades. This is what is one of the idea and most of the time people they have preferred to go with this configuration. Okay. Now, one more strategy that is what has been discussed in NASA SP36, it is an open source document now. So, here it says we are having variation of angle say my beta 2 or alpha 2, you can realize that part and this is what is representing my delta beta. So, based on my outlet angle and what is my delta beta, I can select what will be my C by S. So, that is what is representing what will be my solidity. Okay. So, for particular angle and for looking for particular delta beta, you can assume your C by S or you can get C by S value. The problem here is maybe when we are having this angle out of the range, then that is what will not be coming into the decided range for the solidity and that is where you need to do your interpolation. It may lead to some changes, but later on based on your calculation for the diffusion factor, you can do modification. So, this is also one of the way for the selection of number of blades based on calculating your solidity. Remember the solidity that is what is varying all the way from my hub to shroud because my radius it is varying because my, my pitch that is what we are defining as 2 pi r by z. So, do not forget that part my solidity that will not remain constant from hub to shroud that is what is always varying. Okay. So, this is also one of the way for selection of number of blades. Okay. Now, this is one other approach that is what people they have opted for. It says it is correlating degree of reaction and flow coefficient based on inlet relative Mach number, flow coefficient and my peripheral speed Mach number. These are the numbers that is what has been plotted for different C by S ratios. Okay. So, here if you look at, you can do your calculation for degree of reaction for particular flow coefficient and you will be having your C by S ratio. So, based on this also we can do our calculation for number of blades. So, we can say we are having different methods which are available for selection of number of blades. So, arbitrarily we cannot select the number of blades because we have realized that is what is having direct impact on my pressurizing capacity, it has direct impact on my stall capacity or maybe stall margin, it has also impact on say my overall performance and efficiency. So, we need to be very careful when we are selecting this number of blades. So, we can say we have discussed about three different approaches for selection of number of blades. Now, let us see what all we know we are having two parameters as we have discussed, one that is what is called degree of reaction. We can say it is nothing but it is a thermodynamic estimation of my diffusion. Suppose if I consider my diffusion factor, we say this is nothing but it is aerodynamic estimation of my diffusion. So, do not get confused with these two terminologies. Okay, one that is what is representing thermodynamic aspect and second that is what is representing my aerodynamic aspect. And if you recall, whenever we are doing our design, we are calculating both the parameters. Okay. So, what it says, my degree of reaction that is what is varying along my span based on type of 
uh, our world distribution what we are selecting okay so it says this is what is varying from 0 to 0 0.2 at the root or at the hub and from 0.8 to 1 near the tip region so you can say this is what is having great variation from hub to shroud when we say our degree of reaction that's what is coming to be zero it says it is in that particular section that's what is acting like a turbine because that will be accelerating my flow and that's what is putting say you know rather having our compression to be happen that's what will be acting like a turbine and that's what will be giving you expansion work so we need to be very careful when we are doing our design so we need to catch on eye for the variation of degree of reaction mainly near the hub region okay then we have realized since we are having our density that's what is changing because of our pressure and that's the reason my flow passage that's what is changing all the way from inlet to outlet and in order to take care of this variation we have introduced the parameter that's what is called say divergence angle and we discuss that need to be within certain range it should not be more than 8 degree now all this what all we are discussing we are discussing about the selection of world distribution we are discussing about the calculation of flow coefficient degree of reaction diffusion factor all those parameters that's what we are discussing for our rotor so stator also is equally important okay so when we are doing our design for the stator we have never discussed about the design for the stator let me introduce here say when we are talking about say stator design we need to realize what flow that's what is coming out from my rotor that's what is having say absolute velocity suppose say c2 the same absolute velocity that will be entering in my stator so it says i can say my c3 that's what is equal to c2 remember that's what is changing with my radius so i'm talking about particular stage or particular location okay and we are assuming our absolute flow angle at the exit of my rotor that's what is same as entry of my stator so that's the reason my alpha 3 that's what is equal to alpha 2 now we need to calculate our diffusion factor we need to calculate our degree of reaction so if you recall when we have introduced the parameter called diffusion factor we said in place of angle to be beta we need to select that angle as alpha so that's what will be giving me my diffusion factor at particular station or for particular stator okay we are calculating diffusion factor for rotor we are calculating our diffusion factor for stator same way my degree of reaction we can say this degree of reaction that's what will be coming say 100 degree okay so it says my degree of reaction for stator which will be 1 minus degree of reaction of my rotor same way what all we have discussed in sense of incidence angle deviation angle say metal angle stagger angle all those calculation that's what we are doing in a similar way the way in which we have done for our rotor okay so this is the way in which we can do our design for rotor as well as stator after doing this design we need to do we need to check with the matching so it should be perfectly matched with what flow we are considering as exit from the rotor and the same flow that's what is entering inside my stator now in overall if we look at say when we talk about the design of our axial flow compressor say for particular stage or for say overall stage we are having so many variables available we have discussed say flow coefficient we have discussed stage loading coefficient degree of reaction diffusion factor all those parameters they are been based on you know we are having our equations design equations now this is what is designer's discretion okay it is designer who has to decide with these numbers okay he or she need to decide with this number this is what is a more iterative kind of configuration 
we can say we are going with say number of iteration before finalizing our design okay there are many empirical correlations which are available we are having our casket data also available say for engine manufacturing company they are having their whole lot of database that's what is available for different kinds of aerofoils okay and this those data which are available they are applying for the design okay so it is not a single cut and try kind of procedure we can say this is what is required whole lot of understanding this is what is required whole lot of iterations and after doing all these things you need to go with say workability so you can say we are having our now finalized with the data bank what all we are having okay it may be possible that after finalizing all design aerodynamic design when we are giving that for say fabrication purpose maybe fabricator or mechanical engineer may be having some limitations again he or she will be asking you for the modification in design and that's what will be very challenging so this is what is you know it is like more in sense of iterative designs many times people used to say blade design is art okay it is art rather than science many times now we have discussed about the flow track design we have different options available with us we can go with the combination of different flow track designs all these things that's what we need to be very careful when we are doing our systematic design for hp compressor when we are doing our design for say lp compressor so the flow track selection that is also a very important parameter as we have discussed earlier now when we say we are having our design so very important thing at mint section you will be doing all your calculation later on we will be opting for different design strategies say based on say world distribution that's what is happening we are going with say maybe free vortex design we are going with say force vortex design maybe we will be going with say constant reaction design there are different possibilities we have okay so it says when we are going with say free vortex design we have discussed that may be having constraints in sense of highly twisted blade remember one thing when we are doing our design for say low speed compressor our inlet diameter and outlet diameter they both will be same so my mean line calculation that's what we are doing at a mid station when we are going with the transonic kind of configuration suppose say my fan under that condition my inlet area and outlet area that will be different because i am having high pressure rise and that's the reason why my density change will be very large when we are doing that kind of design we need to select our mid station as 75% of span do not forget that part okay at the same time we will need to divide this inlet station and outlet station in equal number of parts suppose say i am taking say 10 station at the entry i will be taking 10 station at the exit and that's how we are doing our design so you know we have discussed about say constant reaction design what it says it is not preferred because we are having limitation it is not satisfying our radial equilibrium equation and that's what will lead to have deterioration in the performance we also have discussed about our fundamental method and that fundamental method that's what is giving so much of flexibility in sense of selection now you know like as designer what we are expecting is you know to select different parameters and we have realized this selection of parameter that's what is very important based on what thrust we are looking for or what power we are expecting from say particular engine so the selection of parameters like mass flow rate pressure rise number of stages that's what is based on which kind of engine we are designing with or say which kind of engine where we will be using this axial flow compressor 
So maybe we need to assume with axial velocity, maybe we need to assume with my peripheral speed, we need to assume say flow coefficient, maybe radius ratio, tip radius or say my rotational speed. So this all decisions they need to be made by the designers. Okay, so it is not many times the design may not be straight way what we are expecting. Which stage you are designing that's what is very important. So you need to make necessary designs. So it says this is what is designer's choice. Okay, now we need to decide with the number of stages as we have discussed. When we are deciding this number of stages that's what is based on what all we have discussed about per stage pressure rise and this is what will be giving us what will be my distribution okay so you can say for initial stage you can go with high pressure ratio but at the same time your efficiency will be lower when we are going with the middle stage you can go with moderate pressure rise and at the same time efficiency will be larger and if you are looking for say later stages we will be having compromise in sense of efficiency as well as in sense of my pressure rise. So this is what will give some of the idea for the initial gaze. So again here, this is what is the designer's choice. He or she need to make the decision what per stage pressure rise they are expecting. What polytropic efficiency they are expecting from the stage. So this is what is coming with the designer's choice. Over the year with the experience people they are selecting these numbers to be safely and that's what will reduce the number of iterations what they are going with. Okay. Now when we are going with say stage to stage we are calculating our world velocity component, we are calculating our beta angle, we are calculating our alpha angle, we are calculating our degree of reaction. At mid station sometimes we are assuming our initial gaze of degree of reaction. So kind of world distribution what we are selecting that is also designer's choice. Which kind of vertex distribution he or she is looking for. Okay, So you have your whole lot of flexibility in sense of design. So for single state design we will be doing all our calculation in sense of different flow parameters or initial guess parameter what all we have discussed they are say degree of reaction diffusion factor stage loading coefficient your peripheral speed all those things that's what we can decide with and we can calculate that is also the choice of designer now when we are coming with all these designs we need to be very careful here this is what is check when we finish our design, we need to check with what is happening. It says my camber angle at the hub, it should not be more than 45 degree. If this is what is your case, you can say aerodynamically your design will be more challenging. Your losses will be very high and what pressure rise you are expecting may not get or maybe you will be having loss of efficiency. So we need to take care my camber angle should not increase by 45 degree. You can say my delta beta that's what should not be increased by this number. Next check that's what is your degree of reaction always need to be greater than zero. We have seen when we are doing our calculation it may be possible that degree of reaction will be going zero or maybe negative. So under that condition, it is designer's choice to modify that degree of reaction near the hub region. Otherwise, that is also lead to give your flow separation. That's what will lead to loss of efficiency. So we need to be very careful about this aspect. Next parameter, it says my diffusion factor. And as we have seen, we have discussed, Liblin, he has discussed, he said, like my diffusion factor, that should not be greater than 0.5 but with current trend of expected pressure rise to be very high per stage pressure rise to be very high it says people they are safely they are taking 
this diffusion factor in the range of 0.6. So this is what is all giving what all need to be our design strategies. Now I am sure with this understanding of last few lectures we have understanding detailed understanding how do we proceed with the selection of different parameters after selecting those parameters how do we proceed with say design then after doing design or during design how do we decide with the parameters that's what we'll be taking care in the initial design stage only so that we will receive what we are expecting in sense of our pressure rise in sense of our efficiency in sense of our over operating range so here we are stopping with now from next lecture we will be discussing about the design of low speed axial flow compressor we will will be discussing about all this parameter calculation and then we will be checking with whether it is coming in the range or not stay with me and enjoy this course thank you thank you very much